I'm Dale Campbell, creative director at Still Moving, and today I'm going to be talking about the lacy rugged drive that you see strapped to this Blackmagic Pocket 6K in front of me. Just a caveat to this whole video, we are associated with Blackmagic Design, and Lacey actually sent us this drive to try out in this format. So bear in mind, take this all with a pinch of salt, this is my opinion, but we do have those affiliations that you should be aware of going into this. Now interestingly in the past, I've actually been quite vocal about not strapping SSDs to your camera because uh, we prefer to use the internal solutions. It was, in my opinion, a safer option at the time because you didn't have to worry about a drive becoming unplugged and you also didn't have to try and gaff tape a drive to a camera. Now obviously just here we have the rather elegant solution from Smallrig which is allowing us to strap this specific lacy drive, the rugged uh, 500 gig that you've seen just there, into the little cage just here and the cage for that SSD mounts neatly onto their Blackmagic Pocket 6K and 4K cages. So that's all really nice and well thought out. And then additionally, on the cage, we've got that extra option of the locking mount for the USB-C cable and for the HDMI cable. Now that actually makes me feel much better about how this all works because it was my biggest concern. We would go out on a shoot and a drive would become unplugged and then we would lose footage, a drive would become corrupted or something like that. So now, gonna make everyone cringe as I do this, we can actually hold the whole camera, I'm holding my hand there just because I'm nervous, I don't have to, it's absolutely fine, hold the whole camera, I don't recommend you do this, it's probably bad for the cable, but the whole weight of the camera is being supported by that locking mount that you've seen just there. So it's not an issue, we are not going to have that unplug unless it's under extreme circumstances, literally someone hanging off it, and I don't think in that situation we would be worrying about that. It would be someone, you know, pulling on the camera, trying to yank the whole thing over. So that takes care of the mounting and the security of the cable there. But then also there's um, some more things to think about. Like if, just if, something did come unplugged, what would happen to the data on the drive? When we're going out on big shoots, we need to be sure that we're capturing things in a very secure way and that we're not going to get to the end of a morning shooting and find that someone's unplugged a drive uh, while it was still recording and we've actually corrupted it and lost all of the data from the morning shoot. So what we've done, what we've undertaken internally at Still Moving is a little bit of testing on this. I was assured by Lacey that uh, the drive itself would actually continue to lock off files and um, securely write them and we wouldn't find that it corrupted. And actually that's true. So we've been just recording, yanking it out, um, doing a little bit more recording, yanking it back out, plugging it in, putting it on a computer, playing it back. But in all of that testing, with all of that yanking, we found that the drive actually stood up to it. What is worth saying is that when it's writing, it seems to have a buffer and up to about three seconds before the cable is yanked out, everything's golden. Then you lose about three seconds once the cable's yanked out. So if you count back three seconds from where the cable's yanked out, you lose that three seconds. But that is workable. The fact of the matter is that with this solution, it doesn't actually corrupt and it doesn't uh, lose any of the data beyond those three seconds. So that's really cool and I was very impressed that uh, we didn't get any issues with that. There's a lot to be said as well for how we rig cameras when we're going out on shoots. So if you're rigging this to go on a gimbal or if you're rigging it to go on a tripod or a shoulder mount or some kind of handheld like easy rig thing, you're gonna want to arrange things differently. At the moment we've got to mount it on the top and with that cage you can actually choose to mount it in many different places. So it could go on the side, it could go over here, it could go on the other side. There are plenty of points to mount this to. I found the top generally works for us, um, but occasionally you might want to mount it on the side if, for example, you're working on a gimbal and the balance needs to be shifted a little bit that way because every little bit, especially with the, the shape and size of the pocket camera, every little bit of weight in one direction or the other is going to affect how it balances. But you're able to do that with this cage, so that's really good as well. So we've got quite a long cable on just here just for the purposes of showing this, but you might find you want a shorter cable. Uh, you might find that you actually need a longer cable because you're mounting it on that side. Cables are something to really consider with this. You can't guarantee necessarily that the cable you buy is gonna be fit for purpose. So when you're looking at this, uh, the only thing that I found that actually works is to choose something which says it's Thunderbolt 3 USB-C, and then you can pretty much guarantee that it's got enough bandwidth in the cable to be able to handle all of that data that you're pushing through. Normal USB-C cables should work, 
but they don't always because sometimes you just got one which is designed for charging phones. So that is a real consideration when you're looking at these things. Just be careful with your cables. Obviously Thunderbolt 3 is a little bit more expensive, but I would rather get cables that I know are going to work and not have to go through all the rigmarole of sending things back, trying different cables. Thunderbolt 3 is good. We know that it's gonna work, so that's what we go for. And then we just get several different lengths so we can do different rigs with it if we need to. When I was looking at uh, how people are using these and what people are saying about them, something which frequently came up is that you can take the drive off the camera, plug it into your computer and edit the file straight away. Now that's interesting because obviously you could already do that with a CFast card. Arguably you could do it with an SD card, but the data rates are really hit and miss with those. So probably not so much, but with a CFast card, you could have done that. People often didn't, and it's mostly, I think, a mentality around how you approach things as media and how you approach things as hard drives. So people seeing this as a legitimate SSD, as a hard drive they could plug into their computer, they're more likely to do that than they would have been with a CFast card. We can do that, we've tried it, it works fine. Even with the 6K footage, a lot of data, handles it just fine. We've got really high write speeds and read speeds on this drive, so no problems at all. The benefit for us is being able to plug this into a computer with USB-C and then offload really fast to our internal um, server here. It's still moving, got really, really big bandwidth data that we can write through. So it's gonna take everything off there in a matter of minutes. When we were working off SD cards, that's a lot slower. The throughput of an SD card is nowhere near what you're gonna get from this particular drive. CFast cards will approach this and uh, be on a similar footing in terms of speed, but we're gonna look at this in terms of uh, economics and the cost per gigabyte. So our 256 gig CFast cards we had been using previously cost about this much, and then this drive costs about this much, and this drive is 500 gigabytes. So the discrepancy in price there is massive, and it means that uh, this actually makes the 6K a more viable camera for us going out on shoots, because we can write that much data, we don't have to worry about having lots and lots and lots of CFast media, which is really expensive, lined up. And also, because of the way that it works, we can pass it off to someone to edit if we want to do afterwards. The cost of the drive means that it's not prohibitive to do that, and we don't necessarily need to keep these as dedicated media for the next shoot. We can copy this off in the studio to our server, and then Kofi can take that drive home and still have a really, really fast drive for doing all of his edits, for working on some grades, and then he can bring it all back in and connect back up to the files on the server. So that was a bit of an unexpected benefit uh, to how we actually think about these drives. We could have done it with CFast before, but we just really tended not to because of the need for a external reader and because of the way we were thinking about those as media rather than as drives. To summarize then, would I recommend this? I actually, I would. I've been so vocal in the past about saying people are really running a risk with this type of scenario. And that was mostly with uh, situations where you didn't have the locking connectors and also when we hadn't had the opportunity to test the drives to make sure that they would actually write that data and not corrupt. So with all of that in place, I don't have a good reason not to recommend this. So absolutely, yeah, this is a good way of using your Pocket 6K, especially because of that high resolution and because of the amount of data that's required when you're writing that at the higher bit rates. Additionally, I would say that we will be looking to add these to our roster in other roles as well. So for data ingest and generally having backups working off these little SSDs, it's really cool. It means that the team can be working on their laptops. They can be sharing the footage a little bit more quickly and a little bit more easily. So where this technology is taking things and what you're gonna be able to do with it uh, in terms of DIT on the bigger shoots and in terms of just general workflow is really interesting. And I think that for many people, that's probably gonna be the single biggest reason to go for this. Indeed, when I put out a video on YouTube, that really is uh, what most people comment when I say, um, we use CFast, they say, well, CFast is so expensive. It's like, yeah, we've always been invested in CFast and there was a time coming from the original so that you could only use CFast, but now things are changing. I'm glad that Lacey did send us this drive so that we could test it out, um, so that we could have a look at it because it's changed the way I'm thinking about it. I'm always willing to try something and it's not a static landscape. As we've seen over the past few years, the way that people use cameras, the way that uh, camera companies are actually implementing different codecs, different settings, is changing the way we are operating and it's giving us more choice. So yeah, this is uh, now a lockable system. We are perfectly happy with that being secure. It is giving us tons of space, it is not costing too much, and that is probably the biggest thing for everyone looking at this.
So to summarize then, the Lacey Rugged SSDs are an excellent choice for your Blackmagic Pocket 4K or 6K rigs. The only things that I would uh, say you'd need to think about would be the cable length. The cable that comes provided with the drive is primarily designed for those people who want to keep things nice and neat and close into their max. So that uh, you're going to need to deal with just get a high quality cable that's slightly longer or a couple of them different lengths so you can get your rig set up perfectly. In tandem with that, getting hold of some of the cable locking uh, mounts to go onto the rigs. The small rig cable locking mounts fit perfectly within their cage and they work really nicely with this drive with the specific mount that you can get for it. And that just gives you the extra peace of mind. As our tests have shown, it doesn't really matter if the drive becomes unplugged, but having the peace of mind that it's not going to happen in the middle of a take and someone doesn't notice and then you've lost some of it because no one noticed it being unplugged, having those locked in just takes all that away. So it's really sensible to think about that when you're thinking about how you set things up. We have been testing the 500 gigabyte version just here, but there is actually a one terabyte and even a two terabyte version of this drive, same size, same form factor, if you need even more data without um, having to offload or switch cards. So that is available and very reasonable in price. Certainly still compared to those CFast cards, it's a really nice option to have those higher capacities as well. On top of all of this, the whole family is covered by a five-year warranty from Lacey, and that does include the data recovery service. So if anything happens, if the drive gets corrupted somehow, you can send that drive off to Lacey uh, via Seagate, and they will actually look at recovering the data. It's never a guarantee. With any data recovery service, um, it is possible that the data is irretrievable from the drive, but having used professional services in the past, it can be very expensive. And when we've had to recover an SD card that's become corrupted and it's got client data on, you really just have to spend the money and get it done. So here, you've got that in your back pocket at all times, and that five-year warranty just gives you complete peace of mind when you're using it. So all in all, it's a really solid piece of media which is going to serve you well for the lifetime of your camera and indeed give you lots of flexibility with how you're able to move your data around quickly and easily and in large volumes on top of that. So 500 gig, one terabyte and two terabyte as well.